Hi, and welcome to the DBS View. Moderate economic growth, cheap money, and low volatility continue to argue for us to stay invested, despite higher risks compared to a year ago. In US and European equities, the pace of gains of recent months suggests the likelihood of an overdue and significant correction. Market complacency is a concern. Our US Greed Fear Index simply restatement of the relationship between S&P 500 PE and Equity Volatility Index shows a degree of complacency not seen since 2006. But that's a function of low interest rates and clear central bank communication. Equity valuations are high because interest rates are low. Similarly, volatility is low because money is cheap. This punishes savers through negative real rates and forces cash into risk assets. Further, the unprecedented transparency of central banks' communication has arguably taken a lot of uncertainty out of the market. US equity volatility can and has bum along at cyclical bottoms for years. As long as the Fed continues to signal its policy rate will remain lower for longer, low volatility and the chase for yields are likely to persist. Absent a systemic shock, and there's none evident on the horizon, the de developed market bull will likely to continue to run after the expected correction. US bull markets typically end when the economy is staring down the barrel of a recession. The steepness of the US Treasury yield curve does not hint of an imminent economic contraction. Bull markets also terminate when interest rates are so high they threaten economic growth. But the likelihood is that the Fed's policy rate will only start rising in the middle of next year, and most probably end the year in the 1% region. Meanwhile, the euro area is at an even earlier stage in the monetary policy cycle. The European economy is growing, but slowly, and with declining inflation. The European Central Bank is likely to stay with its 0.15 refinancing rate for a considerable period of time. Indeed, it's now contemplating unconventional monetary policy tools to avoid falling into deflation. Japanese equities are likely to be supported by resumption of the yen weakening against the dollar. The BOJ will continue monetary expansion with its eye doubling the economy's monetary base and achieving 2% inflation. Again, this is about negative real interest rates driving savers into risk. Dollar yen is likely to rise again, supporting the Nikkei 225 index. We are upgrading Japanese equities back to overweight from neutral last quarter. So despite higher valuations and risk in developed markets, we expect the equity bull market to continue. Conversely, in Asia and Japan, there's little complacency. Current account and budget deficits have yet to be addressed in India and Indonesia. Emerging markets in Asia and Japan have yet to be tested by a sizable rise in the US 10-year Treasury, which could again threaten net outflows from equities and currencies. And then there's the shadow banking problem in China. But arguably, there's low risk right now given the lack of exuberance in emerging markets. And clearly, there's a lot less valuation risk. MSCI Asia-Pacific ex-Japan valuations are trading about 12.9 times for a PE and more than 1.5 standard deviation below historical average relative to developed markets. The PEG, or Price Earnings Growth Ratio, for MSCI Asia-Pacific ex-Japan is running about 1. Compare that to the two times in US, Europe, and Japan equities. The value is clearly in emerging markets and Asia-Pacific ex-Japan. There's also been a narrowing of the trading range of MSCI Asia Pacific X Japan over the past three years, with the bears selling the bounces lower and the bulls buying the dips higher. The market battle has brought Asian equities bulls and bears head to head, with a decisive resolution over the coming months. Moderate economic growth in the US and lower net treasury issuance have lowered Asia's risk from a sharp spike in US 10-year Treasury yield. 
and Asia's superior economic and corporate earnings growth prospects, as well as lower valuations. Taking that into consideration, we are raising our weight in Asia X Japan to neutral on a three month view, with an overweight on the 12 month view. To sum up, we are positive on equities as a whole across the different regions, but investors should be cautious of an overdue and significant correction in the US in the near term. Value investors should be looking at emerging markets and Asia Pacific X Japan for longer term value. Thank you for watching the DBS View.